Tokematics family, Crypto family, welcome to Moon Mission. I'm back. I know it's been a while. Uh, I was in New York and I was at ETH Denver in Denver. Very, very great conference. So we're going to kind of do a, not a really specific video, maybe it, it could be, but more of an overview on, I mean, where, are we going into the next World War Three? right? Who knows? But how do we, I mean, obviously it's, just, it's definitely very sad what's happening in Ukraine uh, and, and what's happening in Eastern Europe. Um, hopefully things get better. Um, but what does the world do? But more importantly, you are customers in crypto. How, how do you protect your, portf your portfolio? What do you do next? Right? That's a very tough question. And hopefully if you watch my last video, or my, my second to last video where I mentioned that we're essentially in a crypto bear market, right? And now we're going into this potential war between Russia and Ukraine that could escalate into who knows what, what, whether China goes after Taiwan or whether we, uh, NATO get, gets involved and, and we end up having World War Three. who knows, right? But the big question is how do you protect your portfolio and your wealth and how is this going to impact crypto? Right, because this is huge. I mean, day by day, week by week, it's getting bigger and bigger for crypto. Because if we go back looking at the Bitcoin technical indicators, right, looking at the low strategy, right, we had turned bearish on Bitcoin at 56k, essentially saying, "Hey, take profits, let's go home, party is over." And guess what? It turned bullish at 43K. It seemed like we were in the clear, like things were bouncing back. And then boom, Russia go, Russia invades Ukraine. And now the models have turned bearish again, right? And if we compare this, following this model, while not the most accurate, right? It gives you a better ROI versus just holding, right? So that's very, very vital, right? Because it's not about accuracy. Because being right, investing and trading is actually not really the, the big issue. The, the big issue is being able to self-correct your mistakes very quickly when you are wrong. You can be wrong more than you're right. But if you quickly avoid mistakes when you're wrong, then the penalty for, for being wrong is not that big. That's why this has a better Satina ratio and a better max drawdown and less volatility. But anyway, basically, Bitcoin is in a bear market. Again, and if we go to Ethereum and we go to the visual trend indicator, Ethereum has been in a bear market since December, basically at 4100. So, I mean, hopefully you took profits on the way up because taking profits now hurts. I mean, this is why we, we built token metrics, right? So, hopefully you took profits on the way up. You paid yourself, you took care of your family, your loved ones, paid off their debt, their college tuition, whatever, built a home or bought a new home, bought a car. I know I did. Um, right? But looking at this, I mean, even the low frequency strategy for Ethereum is highly accurate, very good Sortino ratio, low max drawdown, lower volatility, and look at the ROI. Right? So both of them are doing pretty good. And they're telling us we're in a bear market. And Ethereum never came back, right? And Ethereum is now looking weaker and weaker, in my opinion, right? You guys know me. Uh, if you've followed me since 2017, you know that I've been on Ethereum Maxi. But now, I mean, I'm, I'm in other coins, right? I'm in Helium Network. I'm in Avalanche. I began staking Avalanche. So how am I viewing the market now during this catastrophe that we're experiencing, right? Because one... One way to, I've been keeping tabs on the market without really going through all the noise is I follow this account on Twitter, very good account called the Spectator Index. And I have the, I have their alerts turned on. So whenever there's any news happening globally, I get this on my phone. So despite all the noise I have, I'm always in touch with the, with the markets because I get their alerts, right? So for example... Ukraine's interior minister bans men aged between 18 and 60 from leaving the country. I mean, this is, in, this is, in, this is insanity. Wow. I mean, this, this, this is really happening. Cause I, I got the alerts that Russia was invading Ukraine last night when I was hanging out 
with a friend of mine having dinner. And I was like, we're basically at a bear market. And the, we had this glimmer of hope of bouncing back. And now Putin just killed it. <laughs> okay. So, cause how does Bitcoin react in this catastrophe? Right. So I'm no economist, but I'll try to go through some various possibilities. I'm envisioning that that could happen. Right. So bear with me. Right. So the first one is Russia invades Ukraine and Russia takes Ukraine. Right. And things end there. We call it a day. But Russia is getting so many sanctions. Right. From the, from Europe, from NATO, from the US. So as they're getting these sanctions, basically all Russian banks have been almost sanctioned, I believe. Right. Because if you go to spectator index, I mean, let me just look for banks. Yeah, US will cut off Russia's biggest bank from US financial system and freeze assets of four total major banks. Okay, so basically, it's, it sucks for our brothers and sisters in Russia. They've basically been taken out of the global economy. I mean, they kind of already were, but now it's almost permanent, right? Unless they, they fix things. But that means Russian people who didn't co-sign Putin and this war are being penalized for this. This is why crypto is powerful. This, this is why Bitcoin and crypto assets were invented because they're decentralized away from central middlemen, like politicians like Putin, right? So now lots of Russians, I would anticipate, are trying to get their money into crypto because they can't really partake in the global economy because the country has been blacklisted and sanctioned, right? So with that being said, I think lots of Russians getting into crypto will be good long-term. Uh, but the question now is, will there be more regulation now on crypto? Because developing countries and nations will expect Russia to start getting into crypto. Because uh, we know Putin has kind of m made some pro-crypto statements. Maybe they, they view that as their backup plan, right? Creating their own cryptocurrency or crypto economy or whatever. But anyway, that's, that's, that's one aspect of doing it, right? But then Bill on the show talked about the markets and oil, right? Basically, Bill said that crude oil, if it goes to $114, that's not good. Uh, let me see what they have for oil, right? So crude oil prices hit $105. Well, WTI crude oil hit 100 let me see what was the most recent one. All right, so top highlights. Russia's stock market plunged almost 30%. Ruble against the dollar crashes. So, I mean, Putin must be thinking that he's done with the dollar and America, and he's basically going for the jugular. I feel like he's going, for, this is his, what's it called, Magnus Opus, his legacy. This is what he's been building up to, is to reunite Ukraine with Russia. But if, if we play this out, I think Putin knows or believes or knows, but to him, I think he, he believes that America is done as a country and he believes this is the death of America. It might sound kind of very stark, but the reason I say that is he knows America has been printing a lot of money and maybe he's doing this war because he knows that America is backed into a corner where it can't really do anything, right? Because Russia attacks, attacks Ukraine. Uh, let's say um, NATO or European countries get involved. Maybe he knows that China will support him, right? If we play out like the worst case, worst case, right? NATO gets involved. Uh, then maybe you, maybe Russia knows that China will be its ally. And once China gets involved, we have this World War III, right? So let's say America gets involved, which they don't want to, but let's say they do. We're essentially getting into this global war, right? And World War III. Uh, that's the worst case scenario. But in a case like that, what happens to the American economy? I mean, the American economy 
while great on right um, and having a le- legacy of being great, they've been printing money out the ass, basically through QE quantitative easing. So how do they deal with that? Right. This year we have the Fed talking about raising interest rates. Right. Do you believe they will raise interest rates during a, a global war? All right. So let's say they raise interest rates. Right. That means it gets tougher to borrow money. Right. And the economy basically slows down. Right. So all, all the easy money that was available decreases. Right. We have housing prices going up, right? Like here in Austin, Texas, where I'm based, housing prices basically have gone up 40% in one year for, for renting. I know friends who've had their homes double in two to three years, right? So basically, we have inflation, highest inflation levels we've ever seen. We have housing prices going up at a very, very high pace. And we have money for borrowing that's being decreased, right? With interest rates going up. That is not really a good economy, right? Because we had Bitcoin, Ethereum, and basically crypto in a bear market. And you add all that in with interest rates going up and people were anticipating lots of rate hikes this year, beginning around March or so. So for me, I was already anticipating this could be a really bearish year. And then you add on top of this a war between Ukraine and Russia. And if oil prices go up, I mean, maybe he, you know, he's, he's thinking that the U.S. is backed into a corner where the only way out is for them to print themselves out, right? They'll have to, I've been reading some articles online. Let me see if I can, if I can find any that basically state that despite raising interest rates, if this war is happening, and everything globally is being affected by this war, then the Federal Reserve will still have to print money. And basically the US dollar will become more worthless as a result of this war. And when that happens, when a country ends up going through ridiculous amounts of inflation, is Putin trying to break the bank of the US by forcing us to print even more money? to go into hyperinflation. I mean, that could sound far-fetched. I mean, I'm no, no economist, but definitely tell me, tell me what you think in the comments below. But all of this to me sounds like he's trying to break the bank of the US and he believes they're backed into a corner that they can't print themselves out of. And he still thinks that this could be like, like the fall of the sterling pound as a reserve currency. But anyway, how do you handle this with, with your portfolio? Well, hopefully you listened to token metrics and followed our indicators and took profits on the way up. But if you, if, if you followed my video a while back, uh, let me bring this up again. Okay, it was... Yeah, so we had this video, are we in a bear market? But... Okay, yeah, this one. Yeah, so actually, if you if you watch this video, uh, which I did basically on rebalancing my, my portfolio, right? So I kind of saw the writing on the walls and I got out of anything in, in my portfolio that I did not like, any altcoins that were under, underperforming, right? Um, and I went into basically long-term value plays. So in this market, I think you have to be in, in long-term value plays. What does that mean? What do you think is going to be around in the next bull market? that will bounce back and hit new all-time highs, right? And for me, uh, I'll go through those assets again, but pretty much all the altcoins that were not doing well in a bull run, I got out of. Um, I did get into some short-term plays that didn't pan out too well. Uh, Time Wonderland got wrecked. Um, Olympus Down hasn't done too well, but good thing is we had good portfolio management. Didn't put more than 5%. Uh, of the portfolio into uh, time. And that's why you do that because in crypto, anything could happen, right? So then you're able to live to fight any, well, one more day. All right, so my long-term plays, Helium Network, Polygon, Ethereum, Avalanche, Lido Dow, 
And that's pretty much it. I still have some other ones, but the way things are looking, I don't, I don't think those are going to really going to do too well right now. Right. So like I have Audius, I have some Mark. Actually, this is not too up to date. Uh, I still have Loot, Olympus. I have some Perp, Liquidity, Alchemix, Time, Looks Rare. But basically, in my portfolio, I only have four long term value plays Helium, Polygon, Ethereum, and Avalanche, and Lido. So five, right? And all of them, I am staking them. Basically, stake and forget, right? So, and then I also have NFTs, and I have blue chip NFTs. Right. I have lots of other NFTs that I degened and aped into. And quite frankly, I would sell them if I could. Uh, but that, that's not neither here nor there. Right. So I recommend you go look, look at your portfolio. Only have value plays. If, 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 if you don't think it's going to bounce back in the next fi- uh, bull market and have a good chance at hitting its all time high and going past that. I would get out now because if it's not doing too well now, it won't do well in a, in a bear market when there's a war going on, right? So look, then every value play in your portfolio, go through and do staking, right? Uh, Avalanche staking, I haven't done a video on it, but it's pretty straightforward. You can stake directly on the ledger. You have to have the, le- the ledger app on, on your, uh, I mean, the Avalanche app on your ledger, and then you just stake there. Um, Helium, same thing. Uh, so for... Avalanche, it gives you the, the ability to pick what validator to stake with. I'm staking for six months. Uh, then with Helium, they have almost $800 million staked. Their AP, APR has gone down. It's now basically about 5%, but it's still pretty good. And I believe when you stake this, it takes a while. I think, I think you have, when you, on slash or on stake, you have to wait for like six months, I believe. Uh, don't quote me on that, but it is a long time. So with Helium, same thing, just stake and forget. Uh, Matic, I've been staking that. Uh, I've been cashing out the rewards. I cashed out some more even today or, or last week. I cashed out like about 40 grand in rewards. So, I mean, the rewards on Matic have been very, very lucrative because um, they're paying out... Uh, I believe 22%, 20%. Uh, I'm not sure if that's up to date. This is not through other platforms like Celsius. This is directly through Maddox staking, right? So for staking Polygon, uh, let me just find this Uh, Polygon. It's also directly through their wallet too. I like to go through non-custodial platforms. I I don't like going through exchanges. Yeah, so for example, you just come here to staking. And right now, are there any still available? Yeah, looks like I think there's still some. But anyway, there's a lot of money being staked there. One side I do like, uh, staking rewards. You can come here and compare different uh, blockchains to see their rewards. So basically, if you have any value play, you should be staking it. Because right now we're going into, we've been in a bear market. So if it's gonna last one to two years. You wanna earn some yields for being a hodler, right? Especially, and if anything, now might, well, not now, but I think in, in a bear market, it really becomes the time to start looking into what you'll buy when it dips, right? So for me, what do I plan to buy when it dips? My value plays, I plan to buy more, right? So as Helium dips, I plan to buy more Helium network. I think that's a top 10 coin. I mean, the fundamentals are so good. They just raised even more money recently. Um, let me find out Helium Network and the news. Yeah, they raised $200 million six days ago at a $1.2 billion valuation, right? Series D round. And after that, they had raised $113 million uh, a few months ago uh, in, the, in a C round. Right, so they're not going away. Right, that's one thing you can definitely leverage for a bear market. Co- companies that have raised a huge war chest are going to survive the bear market. Right, and that's basically layer ones. Right, so Solana is not going away. ETH definitely not going away. Terra Luna not going away. 
Cardano, Avalanche, Polkadot, Cosmos. So my value plays, I plan to buy more Avalanche and more Helium. Um, Ethereum, not sure. I mean, maybe here and there. Uh, Cosmos is definitely on my to-watch list. Polygon, I, I think I'll, I, I may buy more Polygon when, when it dips, if there's a crash. But basically, those are the, are the large cap value plays, right? Now, what are some blue chip value plays I like? Uh, good question. Let me let me see if I can find some. Yeah, nothing's really coming to mind when it comes to low cap blue chips. I mean, right now is not really the time to be doing that. I think I think I'm going to be sticking to my L ones. Um, then, when it comes to NFTs, I think you stick to stick to blue chip NFTs. Uh, I keep on, I've, I've talked about that before in, in some other videos. But some new NFTs that, that have been doing pretty well. You have Invisible Friends, and you have Azuki's. Uh, I, I, I missed the Zookas. Well, our, our team covered it, and I think we covered Invisible Friends as well, but I just haven't really been dabbling in, in NFTs that much. But if you got a nonsense and you could go to the blue chip index, right? This is what they consider blue, the 10 blue, ch blue chip collections, right? Bird API Clubs, CryptoPunks, V Friends, Cool Cats, CyberKongs, World of Women, Bird Ape Kennel Club, Sandbox Lands, MeBits, Me Bits, and Art Blocks, right? And looking at the floor price, uh, me bits have the lowest floor. You can get them for under three ETH. All right, so I have a board ape, and so and if I'm looking to collect, uh, honestly, I would be looking at uh, Azuki's because I I do love my anime. Invisible friend, I think this might be somewhat some hype, but I mean, you you never know, right? So let's look at Invisible Friends. I have Mutants as well. I have one. And let's go to Azuki. Clonex has been done pretty well and popular. Uh, Doodles has also done pretty well. Recent. Those are some new NFTs. Potential for blue chip. But let's do the last, let's do the last 90 days here. All right, so Azuki's are collections that have been trending on crypto Twitter and with whales. So looking at this, active wallets has decreased. Floor price in the last one month has gone up 44%. So if anything, I think the NFT market could do pretty well because it's done pretty well when it comes to, well, not all NFTs, but let's say 5% of the market, right? The blue chips, um, those have done very, very well, right? Despite the crash in crypto and the war, right, the floor price in Azuki's has gone up almost fifty percent. So if you had got in early, you would done pretty well. So if you got in, you could have got in for six point, basically six point three ETH, and you would be having nine ETH right now. So even if you missed the boat. If you knew it was blue chip and you caught it the first day at a floor price, even if you're paying 10x of what somebody else paid, you could have done decent, right? Better than holding your money in Ethereum, all right? 1.5 ETH for Clone X, going to 12.5 ETH, and then Doodles. Okay, this is a different chart. It wasn't what, what I was looking for. Um, but yeah, right? Because so, if we go to the economy, fear and greed index, this is not, not for crypto. This is for just regular markets. We're in extreme fear, right? This factors in junk bond demand, safe havens, put on call options, market volatility, stock prices, and then same thing in crypto. Right. So if you had taken profits all the way back in November, I mean, now would be a good time to go shopping for blue chips, 
right? Maybe buying all the blue chips like Helium Avalanche at a discount. Not everything, but dollar cost averaging, assuming we're going to be into a one-year bear market, maybe even longer. And then buying blue chip NFTs. So for me, that is my strategy. Basically, finding products, basically layer ones that will do well. All right, so we have Ethereum. We have an Ethereum hedge, which for me is Avalanche, basically my my insurance for for Ethereum, and I also would like to have a interoperability play, which is Avalanche for me, right? But for you, that could be Polkadot, that could be Cosmos, right? But basically, we have all these layer ones. The next, the, the meta move is to find what blockchain will abstract and connect and talk to all of them, right? Avalanche for me is that play, right? So I'm basically double dipping. It's my interoperability play and my Ethereum 2.0 insurance. Or you, you could just have ETH, have Solana and have Polkadot as your insurance or Cosmos. Uh, and then one on my on my watch list I've covered before is, is near protocol. Uh, I don't think it's near is here. Yeah, okay, so here we have near. Right, and then I would just stake and forget during the bear market, and then buy blue chip NFTs, and then maybe do. I will, I will not be messing with DGen plays right now in this market, unless it's a can't miss home run. Uh, but right now, the only home runs have really been just airdrops, and even with, with those airdrops, the move has been to sell them pretty fast. So I mean, that's really the way I'm viewing the market right now, because. Uh, if we go to our ratings, even our ratings are pretty uh, bearish. Uh, the highest grades are Compound, Diant, and Tether. Basically, interest earning earning on stablecoin yield. Tether Gold, Pax Gold, Anchor Protocol. Right. Uh, then, if we go to the indices and go to the daily, because the daily would have the most accurate reflection of our TM grade. Pax Gold, Tether Gold, Compound, Celsius, Leo Token. Yeah, so if we actually go to all exchanges, same thing. USDC, Tether, DAI, Axia Coin. So pretty much two thirds of the portfolio is in stable coins. That is earning yield, right? <laughs> so even, even our AI grade knows get, a, get out of crypto <laughs> and earn that yield. Now let me actually see what the yield is on Compound for all these coins. Yeah, so even the yield here is not that good. So if you if you supply die, you're earning two percent. Yeah, not not that good, huh? But so in terms of yield plays, Anchor Protocol we've covered that before in the past. They pay about fifteen to nineteen percent. That's worth looking into in times like this. Currently, they are paying, yeah, 19%. I may have to start looking into this, All right? But anyway, that is the way to play the markets. Uh, be safe out there. Uh, if we update here, let's see what the most recent news is. Ukraine's president implements rules for compulsory enlistment. Oh, man. I mean, uh, I feel sorry for our crypto family in Ukraine. Looks like you're going to be forced to go to war. And then Ukraine's president calls for West to impose tougher sanctions on Russia and ban it from the SWIFT system. So that means even a Russia crypto family who didn't co-sign this war is going to be ostracized and have to really be all crypto. All right. Well, with that being said, tell me what you think uh, down below. Uh, how are you going to play this market? We were in a bear market. Now we're in a war as well. So hopefully your portfolio, your, your portfolio is not bleeding too badly and you already took profits on the way up and you have money that's earning yields and you've simplified your portfolio to have assets that will be there when the next bull market comes back and bounces back and that you aren't just holding pure DJ in place. Um, and then you look, you're still in the game, you're still looking for the next investments, you're dabbling, diversifying into other asset classes, blue chip NFTs and what have you. So with that being said, this concludes my mission, and as you like to say, 
the moon is not the limit to the moon and beyond. Thank you.